the glenohumeral ligaments. There are three important glenohumeral ligaments. The superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral ligament, and the inferior glenohumeral ligament. The inferior ligament have two bands, the anterior band and the posterior band. The superior, the middle, and the inferior glenohumeral ligaments play different roles in the stability of the humeral head depending on the arm position and the degree of rotation. The superior glenohumeral ligament runs from the anterosuperior labrum to the humerus. Its function is to resist anterior translation of the adducted arm. The middle glenohumeral ligament runs from the anterosuperior glenoid arising just inferior to the superior glenohumeral ligament to the anterior aspect of the anatomic neck of the humerus. Its function is to resist anterior and posterior translation in the mid-range of arm abduction at 45 degrees and external rotation. The inferior glenohumeral ligament has two bands, the anterior and posterior band, and it runs from the inferior two-thirds of the glenoid labrum to the lateral humerus. The anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament, it resists anterior inferior translation of the arm in 90 degree abduction and external rotation. The anterior band forms a weak link that predisposes to Bankert lesions. The posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament resists posterior inferior translation in abduction and internal rotation. Tightness of the posterior band leads to internal impingement and increase shear forces on the superior labrum. What are the important associated conditions with the glenohumeral ligaments? The superior glenohumeral ligament, you got the comma sign. The superior lateral margin of the subscapularis that's torn is identified by the comma sign during surgery. The comma sign fibers are oriented perpendicular to the fibers of the subscapularis tendon. The comma sign consists of the crocohumeral ligament, the superior glenohumeral ligament, and the medial sling of the biceps. They make one structure that marks the superior interval of the lateral subscapularis tendon. These three structures can tear from the humerus but remain attached to each other. This comma sign helps in identification of the subscapularis tendon during its arthroscopic repair. The middle glenohumeral ligament, we're talking about the Buford complex, which is a normal anatomical variant, a cord-like middle glenohumeral ligament and absent anterosuperior labrum. It looks like a slab tear, but it is not a slab tear. This may be confusing on examinations, board examinations, for example. Inferior glenohumeral ligament, the anterior band, Bankert lesion. Bankert lesion is the most common lesion of the anterior shoulder instability following anterior shoulder dislocation. It involves avulsion of the anterior inferior labrum. Bankert lesions are typically located in the 3 to 6 o'clock position because this is where the humeral head dislocates. And also this is the area where the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament inserts. Bankert lesion can be either bony or fibrous. Another lesion 
connected to the inferior glenohumeral ligament is the albasa lesion. The labral ligament complex is displaced medially and shifted inferiorly. The labrum is displaced by the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the labrum is rolled up like a sleeve with the intact anterior scapular periosteum. Another lesion that can be found in this area is the GLAD lesion. GLAD lesion is a tear of the anterior inferior labrum, which is not displaced with avulsion of the adjacent glenoid cartilage. The lesion result from impaction of the humeral head against the glenoid. This is caused by abduction and external rotation injury. In the GLAD lesion, the labrum is not displaced and there is no capsular stripping. The last lesion connected to the inferior glenohumeral ligament is the Hegel lesion. The position of the inferior glenohumeral ligament, the anterior band, which is the most important and the strongest ligament, limits anterior inferior subluxation of the humeral head. Humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament may occur due to shoulder dislocation. This lesion usually occurs due to anterior shoulder dislocation caused by combined hyperabduction and external rotation of the arm. It looks like the capsule and the ligament is avulsed from the inferior humeral neck and it is ripped off. And this is the summary of the lesions associated with the glenohumeral ligaments.